Hello and welcome to another introduction video workshop to Blender 2.5. Um, in our previous introduction workshops, we've uh, explored some of the basic mathematical concepts to working in this wonderful 3D modeling and animation software that can be downloaded at blender.org. We've also looked at some of the controls with a three button mouse, the left click, the right click and also the scroll button. We looked at the way uh, the Blender interface is arranged with the windows. And in our last uh, introduction workshop, we arranged a scene or rather we created a 2D image of three um, different geometric shapes that have three different colors that were arranged in three different ways um, and were rendered and saved as a JPEG image. In this video workshop we're going to uh, repeat that process only what we're going to focus on is making a short animation of about five seconds in length um, and these geometric shapes will be animated. Um, so this provides us with an opportunity to recap on some of the things we looked at in the previous workshop but also to be introduced to um, the concept of animation with this software. Now just a note for anyone who's watching this, um, this workshop is made very much for a classroom environment and is made for students in the Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences. So ideally everyone has uh, got Blender running in the background and uh, you'll feel free to uh, follow me um, as we go through this. Those of you that are pretty comfortable um, uh, should feel free to, to quickly move forward and probably just uh, stop when we get to the animation part of the uh, workshop. So um, what I'm going to do is just arrange uh, my project a little bit uh, so it's easier for me to work. I know I don't need this window over here on the left so I'm going to close it down and then I'm going to go over and actually open up a uh, second um, window because I like to have uh, my project in view of the camera so I'm going to turn this uh, perspective to the uh, view the camera sees um, so I'm going to click on view at the bottom here click on camera and now I can see exactly what um, my rendered image will look like because it will only uh, render what the camera sees so I'm going to add two additional geometric shapes uh, to my scene um, which will join this uh, default cube object, which is of obviously a mesh object. So um, I'm just going to move this uh, cube into the corner, and I'm going to uh, add uh, another object right here. So I've moved my Blender cursor, this red and white circle, um, in the position where I want my additional mesh object to be added. So um, here's my geometric shapes. I can see they're uh, in view of the camera. Um, just as an extension, I'm going to add a flooring to my scene, um, so I'm going to go to Mesh. I'm going to add a plane. Plane is usually the, uh, the object you want to be adding when you're looking at um, putting um, a floor in your scene. And I need to uh, scale this, this uh, plane up, so I'm going to select that hotkey which we learned in the previous tutorial. S for scale is our hotkey. S for scale. So I'm going to push S. I'm going to just drag my mouse to scale that up. Uh, I think that's... Uh, it's a good size there, I think. Um, I'm actually just going to move it a little bit forward like that. Perfect. And uh, I'm just going to stick to uh, front view. I just want to make sure everyone, everything is on the floor. So we need to move this down a little bit. Um, okay, great. Just need to move some of my objects up. That there. Cylinder. Move this up. And my cube is here. Okay, <coughs> perfect. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is just add some color um, to this scene. Very simple way of doing this. Um, so I've got my cube selected. You can tell that this particular object is selected by the uh, orange um, uh, border that it has. I'm going to go over to uh, my, um, my uh, properties panel here. I'm going to click on material. And I'm going to go over to the diffuse option in material and I get to choose the color that I want my object to appear as it is now so I'm going to click blue for the cube so now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, arrange these objects a little bit um, so actually um, when we're, how we're going to animate these is we're going to choose an object that's going to scale up and down 
we're going to choose an object that's going to rotate and we're going to choose an object which is going to uh, move location um, and uh, that allows us to explore some of the hotkeys that we were introduced to in the previous video tutorial. Um, as an extension as we move forward with this, if you choose to <coughs> make an object move and rotate, you are free to do so. Um, but I don't think that's necessary to understand the basic concept of animation. Um, okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at scaling this cube up and down, but um, I think I'm definitely going to start it off. Um, sorry, I'm going to look at rotating this cube. So I'm actually going to make it just a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm going to push on the S button, S for scale. That's my hotkey. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I think that's, uh, that works for me. I'm just going to move it along the red axes a little bit, then move it along the green axes, and uh, that location works for me. Then I'm going to uh, move this uh, purple UV sphere in the center of the sink. So I think I'm going to have this shape scaling up and down. And then this cylinder, I'm actually going to move up a little bit, because I'm going to have this cylinder basically um, uh, moving up and down, up and down. Um, so. I'm now ready to begin animating my objects and um, to do this I need to introduce you uh, this is the new part of the workshop so I'm going to slow down a little bit and uh, hopefully everyone's added uh, at least three geometric shapes to the scene they're all in view of the camera um, you've got them uh, colored um, and now you're ready to be introduced to the concept of animating in this 3D modeling and animation software so I'm going to open up this window perhaps a little bit larger than we'll use just so you can see it, um, this is our timeline. This green line here is our marker. Okay, um, so we have our marker, and um, we can move this along the timeline. Now, basically, this timeline consists of frames. So, what do we mean by frames? Well, the definition, the basic definition of an animation, is a two D or three D image or a sequence, sorry, of 2D or 3D images that are showed in sequence very rapidly, one after the other, that provide the illusion of movement. So um, what we do in computer animation is um, each frame represents a different image. And as we know in the movies, um, or for those of you perhaps we don't know, but in the movies, they, the video camera records 24 frames or pictures or images, whatever you want, wish to call it for now, 24 frames per second. So when you re push record on that video camera, it is recording 24 frames per second. Okay. Now by default, Blender also records 24 frames per second with your camera. Um, and just to show you the camera again, your camera is located here. That object there is your camera. So that records 24 frames per second. But here's the great thing. With computer, most computer animation programs, you don't have to worry about inserting every single one of those 24 frames per second. You don't even have to worry about putting a frame every two seconds or three seconds. In computer animation, you work on something called keyframes which basically means uh, with a keyframe is you can put the start position okay and then you can insert the final position of the movement and the computer behind the scenes you won't see it will insert all the additional images that are needed in order for your object to get from the starting point to the end point I'm not going to explain that again, um, but I am going to show you. We're going to, lo we're going to animate our scene now, and I think you'll get the concept um, when we're working in the timeline. So just for now, watch up on the board if that's where I'm being shown, or just look at this video tutorial for a moment. Um, we have um, our start. This is frame one. So right now this marker is on frame one, and by default, Blender ends it at 250. Well. Um, there's 24 frames per second, and we want to make a five-second animation. To do that, how many frames do we need? There's 24 frames per second, and we want to make 
a uh, animation that lasts five seconds, how many frames do we need in our scene? The answer is 120. 24 times 5 is 120. So click here and you can immediately see how um, we've got almost like a gray shading here. Um, this lets you know that these are the frames that will be rendered okay, in our project. Okay? Um, so I know my scene's only going to be 5 seconds in length. Start 1, start end 120. So now what I need to do is I need to um, begin animating my objects. I need to tell the computer, I need to insert my first frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it one object at a time in order to uh, let you see what I'm talking about. So we're going to start by animating um, the green cylinder shape. So I'm just going to pull this um, timeline window, close it a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to go over to this uh, green cylinder. And what I want this green cylinder to do is I want it to go um, up and down. I want to move it along the um, the blue axes, which is the um, Z axis. Okay. So first thing I need to do is I need to insert the location. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit, and uh, I'm going to have this uh, cylinder um, actually move down, and then I'm going to have it move up again. Okay, in the five second animation. So I'm going to first of all insert the first keyframe. I'm telling the computer this is the start location for this object. So how do I do that? Well, I would like to insert a keyframe. So I'm going to use the letter I on my keypad. I for insert. I click on I. And I have this option. Now all we're going to worry about for this video tutorial is the top three. So um, I'm going to insert uh, the location because that's what I'm animating with this object. So I'm going to click, left click, and you can see this green marker down here has now gone to a yellow line. And that is the computer telling me, hey, okay, I've got that keyframe. That's the starting point. So now what I want to do is I want this cylinder to move down um, and halfway through the animation, I want it to be on the floor. So to do this, I need to uh, get to the halfway point. So half of 120 is 60. So on frame 60, you can see exactly what frame it is here. Frame 60, I want my cylinder to be on the ground. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to left click the blue arrow to move it down the axes. I'm going to make sure it, um, make sure there it is it's touching the ground. <coughs> and I'm going to insert this as my final um, keyframe of that. Um, of that sequence. So I'm going, to, <coughs> I'm going to click on I to insert, insert location, and if I just to back up here you can see here's my animation. So I can actually click on play and you can see that it's animating. I'll pause it there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to take this uh, green marker, I'm now going to move it all the way to 120, which is the end of my animation. And I'm going to go and insert the final frame, which is, um, <clears throat> so this keyframe um, marks the end point of that, but also um, uh, marks the starting point to the second part of the animation, because that's where it's located. So I want it to finish again off the scene. So um, I've moved it into the position I want. I'm going to push I for insert location and now I've successfully animated my first object I can click on play down here so you can see this object animating up and down okay so that is my animation so if you feel comfortable with this concept feel free to uh, move ahead now for those of you that uh, want to watch again you are free to do so so we're going to go over it again this time we are going to um, uh, move over to our sphere so I'm going to right click this to activate it. You can see that there's no keyframe set to this object. So I'm going to move all the way back to the beginning, frame number one. And I want uh, this uh, sphere to scale up in size and then shrink back down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, push uh, S for scale. I'm just going to scale it in a little bit. And uh, S for scale. And I'm going to insert. So I'm going to go I for insert, and I'm going to go to scale because that I'm telling the computer, well, we're going to be animating the scale. So 
I'm going to say set the start point of this scale. So there. Same thing again, I want to do it halfway. If you don't want to do it halfway, you just want to quickly animate it. You could go all the way to 120 frames and be done with it. But I want it to scale up and scale down again. So I'm going to go to frame 60, which is my halfway point. I'm going to push S for scale. I'm going to scale up this image to about here. That works out okay for me. I'm going to push I again to insert. Insert scaling. And then I'm going to move my keyframe to the very end of my scene, which is 120 frames. I'm going to click on S again. I'm going to scale it back down to here. And I'm going to click on I for insert scaling. And if I click play, I've now got my objects um, scaling up, scaling down. Also, I've got my green cylinder in the background moving up and moving down. After the second time of seeing this, if you're feeling comfortable, off you go. If you want to see it one more time again, I'm going to do it very quickly. I'm going to have this cube rotating. So now I'm going to right click, activate this cube. I'm going to move my uh, marker all the way to the beginning of my scene, which is frame one. I'm going to push R. Oh, sorry. First of all, I'm going to insert my keyframe, I. This time we're going to rotate this cube. So I'm going to click on rotation. Okay. This time I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna rotate it constant. So I just need to insert this one in keyframe. I'm gonna move my marker all the way to the end of my scene. No need to go halfway through because it's just gonna rotate constant. I'm gonna click on R and I want it to rotate five times during the scene. So I'm gonna rotate it five times. One, oh, excuse me, let me back that up. So R, one, two, three, four, five times of rotation, left click that, and I'm going to I for insert rotation, I click on play now, and I've got my entire scene um, animated, okay, so that's the basic concept of animation, um, feel free to play around a little bit if you wish, um, but now I'm just going to show you how you can animate this object, as an extension I'm just going to change the sky I'm going to go over to the environment. I'm actually going to add um, some color to the background, the sky. So um, we'll cover this in a different tutorial, but um, I just want you to be able to see the, the final product. I'm going to go down to environmental lighting, um, and I'm going to uh, actually just select ambient lighting. Ambient lighting just allow, says to the computer, hey, the light's going to come from everywhere. So now I can render my image if I want just to see it, test it out. There's my image rendered on frame 91. So on frame 91, that's what my scene looks like. Um, so I can actually close this window down so you can see it. That's what my scene looks like on, um, on frame 91. I'm going to go and create uh, my animation. So I've got this uh, um, little tab here, which is the camera. That's render. I'm going to go down to here, um, need to change the location, TMP is a temporary file, if it gets saved to that file you will lose it. So click on folder and uh, I'm going to click on, um, I'm going to actually save it into uh, my, um, I'll tell you what, yes I'll save it into here and uh, in Wordwood and I save all my files in Blender and I'm going to uh, call it um, Annie. Geo test two, and I'm going to click on accept, and I'm going to go down here, and I just need to uh, select this option as a quick time um, because I want to make sure it's a quick time file, and uh, you do have the option of changing the frame rate, it said 24 FPS frames per second, but that's fine. We're leaving it at that. So once this is all set, you've got it um, located to where you want it, um, saved it. You can click on animation and it will begin rendering all of these keyframes. Remember, every single image will now be rendered. Even though you actually only inserted two frames, remember the computer in between um, frame starting point, frame one to the end frame, um, the computer inserts all the additional keyframes. So as you see this rendering, you can see the green cylinder slowly coming down. Um, because that's uh, my image is changing.